I like to boil things down to their essence. I don't really, I don't think you really understand something <clears throat> unless you can boil it down. Yeah. Unless you know the, the basic components of wh whatever it is and, and you can, and you can state the, uh, the heart of the matter, the, the real essence, the foundation of, of the issue, the lifeblood of the issue, whatever that might be. <clears throat> and that's what I want to, um, to bring to your consideration this morning. Why did Jesus give us uh, bread and wine? Why did he give us the loaf and the cup? Jesus didn't give us figs and water. And there's a, there's a basic, essential difference between um, bread and figs and wine and water. Bread and wine are the products of labor. You don't, you don't, there, there are no streams that give wine. Your labor, man's labor is what produces wine. There are no trees that grow bread. There are no bread fields. Bread is the product of your labor. So someone has to invest in bread and wine. They're not, they're not natural products. That's the pro process of labor gives us bread and wine. <clears throat> from, the, from the wheat, we get the bread. Wheat has to be planted which is labor. It has to be cultivated. It has to be cared for. It has to be watered. It has to grow. It takes time to get the wheat. It's not, a, it's not overnight. It's not instantaneous. James talked about the, the patience of the husbandman. Long patience. He waits for the harvest. That after it is uh, planted and cultivated and weighted, uh, after it grows and it, it is watered, it has to be harvested, which is long labor. It has to be threshed, which is hard labor. It has to, it has to be ground, and it has to be sifted, and then it has to be mixed, and then it has to be baked. You see what it takes to get bread. It's not, it's not instant. There is a lot that's invested in the process and the labor of bread. So Jesus didn't just pick two random things. Let's, let's use bread and let's use wine, we, since we have some of that anyways. Jesus never did work like this. God never does work like this. He doesn't just pick what's convenient or, pick what, or just randomly or um, sporadically. He picked bread because it was appropriate. Yeah. He said, this is my body, which is broken. He picked the, the cup, the product, the fruit of the vine, because it was appropriate. Now, uh, the, the grape vine also, uh, same as wheat, has to be planted. It has to be cared for. Uh, grape vines are not like um, crabgrass. Crabgrass, it just, it just grows everywhere. It grows where you don't want it to grow. It just just a, a little bit of it starts, and it, and it goes, goes everywhere. But it doesn't take any any uh, uh, cultivating doesn't take any it doesn't take a vine dresser mm -hmm. to grow crabgrass but it takes a vine dresser to uh, to cultivate and to maintain a vine mm -hmm. in fact there there are uh, vines in the world that are hundreds of years old that have been cared for and kept down through they're actually inherit they're actually an inheritance yeah. To inherit this vine that produces the quality of fruit that that it that it does. So the vine dresser has to take out the weeds and take out the stones. It has to prune the vine. It has to purge the vine of devouring uh, insects. Even there are uh, diseases that can uh, that can attack and kill uh, grape vines that the vine dresser has to be aware of. And then the grapes also, as the wheat, has to be harvested. And uh, it, it takes care. It takes meticulous labor to harvest grapes. It can't, it can't be done by machines. It can't be done in, uh, by a heartless, mindless process. It has to be done with care to harvest the, 
the fruit of the vine. And then it has to be tread. Remember the scripture talking about treading out the wine or a, a wine press? Isaiah talked about the, they built, he built a press in it mm-hmm. to process the harvest of the, of the vine. And then the treading out of the grapes gives new wine. Now, there, there's a lot of bantering about, it, about the, the issue of wine in its relation to drunkenness. And the scripture talks about new wine. Mm-hmm. And th- this is what the Lord gave. Mm-hmm. He gave us new wine. It's, it's, it's fresh. It's life-giving. Oh, yeah. there, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be so much confusion about the issue. Yeah, right. The Lord would not have connected something with, with as, as such as holy as his offering mm-hmm. with something of such danger that can cause drunkenness. Right. This is new wine, and it's new bread. Mm-hmm. So wheat and grapes, are they're, they're the natural fruit of the earth. But Jesus gave us bread and wine. Jesus didn't give us the raw fruit of wheat and grapes. He gave us the processed product of bread and of wine. Bread and wine are the fruit of labor. Both bread and wine are actually products of violence. There are, there are some things, uh, there are some uh, products that can be... Uh, Produced or can be uh, made with relatively um, tender, a ten- through a tender process. But wheat is ground. It's ground out with stones. And then it goes through an oven. It's violent. Bread is the, pro- is the product of violence. And same with, same with wine. It's tread out. It's pressed. It's stamped. In the old days, men actually tread the... The, uh, the, the grapes. It was act- the, the grapes was actually put in a vat and they were actually tread mm-hmm. by the bare foot of men. They were pulverized. They were crushed. They were, they were tre- that w- that's what treading was mm-hmm. in order to extract the, the lifeblood of the grapes. They were, they were crushed. It's a, it was a violent process. Threshing, treading, harvesting, grinding, and finally the, the flame of the oven all are pictures of the process of, of suffering that Jesus went through. That's why, that's why the bread and the wine are appropriate to remember him by. That's right. mm-hmm. Now think about this. This is not something that uh, I have to limit, my, limit this statement to my own experience, but it, from my young years, the significance of the bread and the wine was not explained to me. This is, this is something that came that I was instructed in later in life, and I don't I don't want our children to spend their younger years up into their early adulthood uh, not knowing why do we take why did Jesus give us bread and why did he give us wine? This is significant. That's right. <clears throat> now here, here's the caveat Jesus was not offered for sin when he was 12 years old okay from it, in, in, in this from this perspective when Jesus was born he was wheat and he was, he was just on the vine when he was born when he was 12 years old he was, he was the budding wheat and he was the small he was the small grape he was not at 12 years old or at 21 years old. In our culture, for some reason, we think of 18 as, as when young men become a man. I think, now that I'm 30, I think that's kind of comical that we think of an 18-year-old as a man. But in the, Jew, in the Jewish culture, it was 30, am I right? They were considered men as 30. So I'm, I just, in that culture, I just grew out of my youth because I just turned 30. Now, I don't think it's insignificant that Jesus began his ministry at 30 years old. This is significant because God actually created the Jewish culture. This is not, we created the American culture, and look what it's done. God created the Jewish culture, and in that culture, you became a man at 30. And Jesus started his ministry at 30, 
And he also did not become 